Good morning ladies and gentlemen, it is Tuesday and it is time for another episode of the vlog. Let's drive to work. Cheeky bar stewards. I left a note on their window yesterday saying, please don't park in front of my shutter doors. And they've turned the fucking van around and parked in front of my shutter doors. He's obviously a prick. So, if they're not gonna listen to the notes, then phone call to the landlord, to the land <laughs> then phone call to the landlord and get it shifted because it's not on. We pay for them parking spaces. You can't just have any old Tom Dicorari parking like a twat in front of them. Rant over! Let's do some fabrication. Fan's gone. Right, I've just spent all morning, it's basically lunchtime now. I've just spent all morning getting out, you see over there, some of the fittings that I bought from GC Supplies. Top company by the way, check it out. Also getting together a few bits and bobs that I had lying around. Some bits that might have been left over from IVB, some bits that I had from previous um, brewery builds at home and what have you. So we've got an, a small amount of fittings, but not enough. Nowhere near enough for what we're going to need to get the, uh, get the brewery up and running. I need some inch and a half pipe, some more liners, all that kind of stuff. So I've just got off the phone to Andy at, uh, at GC Supplies. He's talked me through what I need, basically. Um, if you're watching Andy, that's the size of the filter. I think it's the two inch one. Don't know if it helps, but it says 750 on the back. You probably can't see that. Anyway, that said, I do require some one inch liners and some inch and a half pipe and what I've done is try and lay out in front of the tanks what I've got and what I need. So I sat upstairs and began to calculate what's the best option to get the most amount of liquor out of this kit, which is going to be 12 or 13 casks per brew. We're talking like 520, maybe 600 litres depending on the ABV and if I can push it. And yeah, and it looks to me like the bottleneck is the mash tun. So this is the tank that I picked up off Dara and I think it's gonna end up being a little bit of a sort of what do I do with it kind of tank. I can't really use it as a fermenter because there is a seam on the inside where it's been pressed and rolled. So chances are I'm gonna to have to climb in there and run around with the uh, TIG torch and basically just fill that in. So I'm thinking now, do I bite the bullet and make a mash ton? So that means getting another tank up and running. Uh, I've done the calculations on Beersmith. Let's run upstairs, I'll show you. I've been looking here on Beersmith at calculations for mash tun volumes. So you'll be able to see there the mash tun volume for me. If I wanted to brew a, I think this was a about 6.8% beer, 6.8% ABV, I'd need a mash volume of 576 litres. Well, that's a 400 litre tank. While there's a possibility that I could squeeze more grain and less water and have a thicker mash, it's obviously going to result in, uh, in a different style of beer to what we brewed before, if I was to replicate this particular recipe. So I think the key thing is, while I'm in the process of manufacturing, how much more difficult is it going to be for me to manufacture 
a 600 litre mash tun. I've come to a conclusion and the conclusion is I'm going to use the 400 litre tank to start with because to create a tank which will give me much more space I can go right up to 1130 litres and anything between that size and what I'm at now still requires the same amount of raw materials. There's a quick rundown of my back of the fag packet calculations. So either way, uh, I'm going to require a sheet of 1250 by 2500 and two sheets of 1 by 2, 1.6 mil stainless, in order to manage to fabricate a tank that size. And that's something that I don't really need to do off the bat. I can just put a copper pipe manifold in the bottom of this one. We'll run with that, keep it simple, stupid, and we will expand in the future. You know, we've got everything we need. I don't need to do it all in one hit. We just need to get off the ground and start to walk before we run, of course. myself a little list put together I'm gonna to now take this 400 litre tank into the back room and I'm gonna see if I can fit an outlet to it which is probably gonna start off at two inches and then we'll drop it down to uh, inch and a half at some point and then I also want to see if I can run around where uh, run around there with the TIG and, uh, and seal that little groove in the bottom up hopefully it won't be an issue well, I've had my head in the tank. I doubted I could do it for a moment, but we pulled through. So on the side, I've backed it off with copper again, with the uh, clamps holding that in place. And on the inside, I'm just flowing about 70, yeah, 70 amps on the TIG. Three, 2.4 mil filler wire. And she seems, after a shaky start, she seems to be running nicely, check it. I have to climb in the tank like such, and you can see, if I put this on full brightness, you can see the weld that we've got going there. I think that's gonna make a nice little hygienic weld, and I don't think there's gonna be much of a problem, provided I can get all the way around. But, uh, yeah, she's not looking too bad, considering Considering the confined space that I'm in, this tank is a little bit smaller. It's a little bit smaller than the uh, other tanks that I've been in, in terms of diameter. So it's a squash, and of course there's no cone at the end, it's a flat bottom. So I'm really squidged up there. Let's get on with it anyway, stop moaning. I'm in beast mode. That is over. So what I did was, oh, it's still hot. Back the weld, oh it is really. Back the weld with copper on, uh, on the outside. And then on the inside, well both, this is both the outside, but on the sides and the base. Then on the base, I backed it with that copper pipe that we used to back off the conical welds, if you recall. Now you might be able to see this, the weld that I've put into it now has pulled the edges in and it's made this disc deform upwards. So I'm hoping that I can pop this in the other direction and there may be a chance, probably won't work, but there may be a chance that I can pop a, 
an outlet in the centre. Fail that, I'm going to put two or four legs on it and I'm going to make the back legs 50mm taller than the front legs so there's a natural drain to the front of the tank and provided I can pretty much empty 95% of the liquid that's in there uh, that's not a problem for brewing I just want to uh, get as much liquid out as possible for the cleaning and CRP process even though the tank's quite quite small small enough to lay on its side and blast out with the with the old hose pipe okay. in there tight there we are <laughs> that's not bad at all so we do have some sugar in so there's no real convenient way for me to back purge this so I'm actually quite happy to just run it as we have and if I zoom in there you'll be able to see there is a little bit of coke in, a little bit of sugar in but it's all very very minimal I bet you if I ate it with a buffing wheel it would come right off and then moving to the side of the tank we also have a little bit of sugar in there which is obviously from the breakout of the stainless properties in the material but just remember there's a fillet weld on the inside of here so this coking is backed off it's backed off by considerably thicker maybe five mil square or seven mil square fillet of stainless steel on the inside so if I just hit this with a wheel obviously it'd be, it'd be handy if I had one that had actually some material left on the pad but I'm going to hit this with a wheel and I bet you it cleans right up that looks pretty good already there you can't quite see it's just out of shot that bit I was just out of shot but yeah down there come straight off well I've spent much of today considering my position with tanks fittings and uh, everything else that I'm going to need to get this kit off the ground up and running so what I think I'm going to do with the mash tun, which of course is going to be a little bit on the small side for us, but we can work with it for now, is fit it out hygienically. So on the edge, I'm going to have, this is going to be cut like a, um, to a point, angled cut like that almost. I'm going to have this come out the bottom of the tank and stick on the front like that. So, you know, that'll be the full draining, fully drain the uh, mash tun through that. And then we'll have just short stumpy legs on there. Doesn't need much height on the, on the mash tun. Yep, so I'll just get the grinder out. I'm not putting that on, that's a, a reduced T. Uh, it's gonna be a piece of two inch pipe. That reminds me, I'd better order some two inch pipe as well. Now I'm rambling, let's just get on with it little trick for cutting uh, a flat angle on a piece of pipe much like this draw around a piece of cardboard put a little triangle in the top and uh, something to stop her shifting about too much on the bottom and you can stick her on like that you've got straight edge all the way up straight edges on both sides so when I slice that off, then I put that up against a piece of uh, steel, flat steel, it should meet it all the way around and I can go on the inside of the tank and weld it on.
boys, we're approaching the end of the day. I'm just gonna stick my hat on, give Gemma a call, and go for a quick pint. And we will see you Wednesday or Thursday. I mean tomorrow. Yeah.